Yo, what is up guys, it's Pedro here, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys everything you need to know about Marty Herney, the new general manager for the Washington football team. We're going to talk about his draft history, his free agency history, how he handles the cap, and what his role is going to be on the Washington football team moving forward. If you guys are new, subscribe for Washington and NFL content, so let's get right into the video. Okay, so first let's start off with some background knowledge on Marty Herney, where he was before he got to Carolina. So, he began his career in football as a public relations representative for Washington in 1988. From there, he became the Chargers assistant general manager from 1990 to 1997. He was actually the assistant general manager to Bobby Bethard, who did work for Washington and is probably our best GM of all time. From 2002 to 2012, Herney oversaw his first stint as the Panthers general manager. He helped lead the team to a Super Bowl early on, but regressed down the stretch and it was fired in 2012. He was rehired five years later when the Panthers cut loose Dave Gettleman and beca uh, became the full-time general manager once again in 2018. And one fun fact is that the Panthers owner in 2012 was considering firing firing Ron Rivera after I think a 1-5 in five start. But Marty Herney came in the office and said, fire me instead. Don't fire Ron Rivera. We hired the right guy. And that is exactly what the owner did. And Ron Rivera be stayed there until last year so that's a nice fun fact right there so let's go on to some of his draft picks which it's really interesting because he's really good in the first round you want to look at some of his notable draft picks and we'll look at more in depth right here Julius Peppers, Thomas Davis, D'Angelo Williams, Ryan Khalil, Cam Newton, Luke Keekley, Josh Norman, Christian McCaffrey, Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore, Dante Jackson, Brian Burns, and Jeremy Chin. So he's a lot of amazing players. And he has a way higher success rate than a lot of GMs on the first uh, round pick than a lot more other GMs do. So this year, they drafted all defense. Again, some of these picks are, you know, influenced a little bit by the coaching staff and, of course, the scouting department. But they drafted Derek Brown in the first round, who's been really, really good for them. Uh, Gross Matos also been pretty solid. Jeremy Chin, who's one of the best rookie safeties in the NFL, is going to be in the running for defensive rookie of the year. Obviously, isn't going to win it, but it's probably going to finish top four, top five-ish. And that was a solid draft right there. They got a couple good players in the second round. And, you know, Troy Pride is all right. But besides that, no one else. And that's the thing with Marty Herney. He doesn't really have good late round draft success in 2019 drafted Brian Burns an absolute stud but after that really hasn't had much success in the later rounds Greg Little not that great Will Greer in the third round was a reach a lot of people did like him but in the third round um, not a great pick right there and again you guys see these late round picks really no one notable right here um, you look at 2018, DJ Moore, again, that's a stud. He's been really good for them. Dante Jackson, solid second round pick. And again, no one really good after that. Um, and yeah, you go down to 2017. We'll go a little bit quicker here. This is one of his better drafts. You know, got Christian McCaffrey in the first. Absolute steal. Um, Curtis Samuel, also pretty good in the second round. Um, and Harrison Bucker, who's the Chiefs kicker. They got him in the seventh um and then 2016 all right draft class for butler who's been eh you got james bradbury who's been really good but again these picks right here um were more 2016 i think he was not the gm so we got to go back down all the way to around 2012 and that's when he was the last uh when he got fired the first time luke keekley Again, a stud at pick nine, but you got to hit on those first round picks. It is good that he is, you know, almost every first round pick he's had has been successful. And that's not, has not been the case in Washington, but he's, we've also had some late round steals. But in 2012, he was able to draft Josh Norman, who was an all pro at one point in his career. So that is a very good draft pick. Um, and then 2011, Cam Noon, uh, Troll McClain. But again, not really any great 
late round draft picks, Greg Hardy in the sixth. Um, they had a lot of draft picks that year. So you can look at some of their draft picks right here. I'll go slowly right here. Jonathan Stewart, um, John Beeson, who's was really good. Ryan Khalil in the second. Um, D'Angelo Williams, Thomas Davis in 2005. So you guys can see that right here, Julius Peppers. So, you know, he's he's drafted some Hall of Famers, definitely drafted some Hall of Famers. But again, those lay round draft picks, you have to be able to hit on some of those. And he really hasn't hit on a lot of them. We'll see what happens, though. And they're considering bringing in another guy. And that could be Martin Mayhew. And he could be better with the late round guys also. Let's see and let's because if Kyle Smith is here and he is back in his same role or maybe even elevated, honestly, that is a pretty good, um, you know, match between someone who hits on the first round picks and someone who's a good late round guy. I mean, Kyle Smith is great in the third fourth and beyond he's drafted some really good players there you know you got Gibson McLaurin Cam Curl Jimmy Moreland Cole Holcomb and more so um that would be a pretty good match between Marty Herney and Kyle Smith so let's please hope that Kyle Smith remains in Washington and one quick thing right here from Burgundy blog I did show this in my video yesterday but um this is what they said on Marty Herney or Marty Herney actually says, I am not an evaluator at all. Um, so he really comes to his decision based on the scouts. He obviously has experience. And but and then Wilbon said, Herney is a facilitator, a consensus builder, an administrator who can pull together all manner of resources and come to a sharp, well-reasoned decisions. He's going to be, and here's one more thing. Um, he doesn't have the magic gift. He knows it. Revere knows it. But that's not why he's here. Herney is a point guard and executive, also as a longtime top assistant to the best GM we've ever had. Recommend at least an open mind. And I agree. And his free agency isn't the best, but he has signed Eric Reed, Robbie Anderson, Matt Khalil, Trey Boston, uh, Ted Ginn Jr. And Matt Khalil was one of his biggest whiffs, um, paid a lot of money, and he did not produce with the Panthers. That's one knock on him is his cap situations. Every time he's left the team, or at least in 2012 when he left the team, it was not in good hands because of the cap situation. He left them in. So, But this time, it most likely is going to be Rob Rogers who has an elevated role from what Rob Rogers had in Carolina. So you got to keep in mind, his responsibilities in Washington are going to be way different than they were in Carolina. Um, we'll see what happens with that. And I think if we can keep Kyle Smith, I'm honestly okay with this hire. This hire is to, you know, take a burden off of Ron Rivera because he had a lot to deal with this offseason. Obviously, his cancer diagnosis and all this stuff with the organization, but he was pretty much the acting GM with Kyle Smith. He had to do a lot of the things um, that a GM would normally do. So I think that's what Marty Herney is going to do. And we still got the same scouts, especially if Kyle Smith stays. So I think we'll still be able to hit on those seventh round um, picks. But yeah, we'll see what happens. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash that like button. Subscribe if you guys are new and turn on those post notifications so you never miss a video. And yeah, peace.